this video, we're going to show you how easy it is to run your Cypress tests on Sauce Labs using the Sauce CTL init command. This video is intended to show those who might already have a Cypress test how they can get up and running quickly on Sauce Labs. Sauce Labs has an example Cypress test that you can use that is actually already configured to run on Sauce Labs out of the box. In this example, we're going to copy the two files that all Cypress test suite have, which is the Cypress directory and the Cypress JSON file, and show how you would configure to run with the Sauce CTL. I'll start out by creating a new directory called Sauce CTL Setup Example that I'm going to put my Cypress tests and setup Sauce CTL in. Once you have your project directory set up, you're going to want to copy in those two important files the Cypress directory and the Cypress JSON files from wherever else you might have Cypress tests stored on your machine. Once you have your Cypress project set up, you'll want to make sure that Sauce CTL is installed globally on your machine using npm install with the global flag. This will install the Sauce CTL runner so you can upload your files and tests to Sauce Labs. The next thing you'll need to do after you have your Cypress test files is set up your Sauce username and access key with Sauce CTL. If you set your Sauce username and access key as environment variables, Sauce CTL will automatically detect them. Also know that the Sauce CTL init workflow will prompt you to enter these as well. To find your Sauce username and access key, log into your Sauce Labs account and go to user settings. Here, you can find your username and access key that you need to run your tests on Sauce Labs. After you run the Sauce CTL configure command, you'll be prompted to enter a username and access key. As you can see here, it's auto-detecting mine for my environment variables. If you would like to change them, you can enter it with the Sauce CTL configure command at any time. When credentials are configured for the Sauce Labs platform with Sauce CTL, a credentials YAML file is created at the same level that you installed Sauce CTL. For example, since I installed Sauce CTL globally, or in other words, under my user, I'll be able to find the credentials YAML file in a hidden .sauce directory. Inside, you'll find the credentials that I set up when I ran Sauce CTL configure. Now that you have a Cypress test project set up and Sauce CTL installed globally, we're ready to initialize Sauce CTL in our Cypress project. Navigate to the folder where you're keeping your Cypress test files and run the command sauce ctl init. This will kick off a workflow that will generate a config file allowing you to run your Cypress tests on Sauce Labs using Sauce CTL. First, you'll be asked about which data center you want to run your tests in, which can be found on the Sauce Labs dashboard. Next, you'll want to choose your Cypress framework and the version of Cypress that you're using. You'll set the Cypress configuration file, which is typically Cypress JSON the browser you want to run your tests in, and which platform or operating system. Finally, you can choose when you want artifacts such as screenshots, videos, and other logs downloaded when you run your Cypress tests. When you finish running the Sauce CTL init workflow, you'll notice that there are two new hidden files in your project folder. The first is the Sauce Ignore file, which allows you to specify which kinds of files and directories you don't want uploaded to Sauce when you run your test suite with Sauce Control. The config YAML file contains all the information for how you want to run your tests on Sauce Labs. Now we're going to take a little bit deeper look at the config file generated by Sauce CTL init. At this point, this is what your project structure should look like. You should have your Cypress files, as well as your Sauce config file and your Sauce ignore file. At the top of the config file, you'll see the basic settings for using Sauce CTL. We have the API version for Sauce CTL testing framework we're using, and the ability to change other defaults, such as the mode, in case you want to run your Sauce tests in Docker mode. By default, tests are run on Sauce Labs and not in Docker, but you have the option to change that. You can also choose whether or not you want console logs to show up in every situation. Otherwise, they'll only print out if you have a failing test. Next, you have your set of Sauce settings. You can change things like the data center, the amount of virtual machines you want to be able to run tests on concurrently, and the name or location of your Sauce Ignore file. Underneath the Sauce specific settings, you'll see settings for your Cypress test suite. 
you can configure which config file it uses, the version, and more. The suites tag is an important part of the config file that you'll want to become familiar with. You have the ability to set the mode to Sauce or Docker, but it will default to whatever the default is set to, which is typically running on Sauce Labs. Here, you're able to define which sets of tests are run, the browser, the platform name, and other options such as screen resolution. The full information for what you can set is in the Sauce Labs docs. Note the test files option at the bottom of the suite name. This will allow you to specify which directories and test files will be run when the suite is executed. You'll want to change these according to which tests you want run in which environment. You can also add on as many suites as you like, allowing for different operating systems, browsers, and even sets of tests. Configure them under the suites tag, adding the options that you would like for your tests. Last but not least is the optional root directory setting telling you where your root directory for your project is and the options to download or not download artifacts. Now that you have your Cypress test suite configured to run with Sauce CTL, all you need to do to start your tests is the command Sauce CTL run. As your Cypress tests are run, you'll see console output about the information being sent to Sauce Labs and you can visit the app.saucelabs.com dashboard to see what's going on with your Cypress tests. Since I ran two suites and have a concurrency of more than one device, you can see two tests running at once. Clicking on the test name takes you into the test details page where you can see logs and metadata that give you more information. In the logs, you'll see the console output for the Cypress test, and you can get more information about where the test was run. There are also logs with the JSON information sent for each test, the Cypress log, and the config YAML that was sent at the time the test was run. The Sauce Labs app also provides video and screenshot assets that make it a lot easier to analyze and share the results of your Cypress tests. The last thing that we'll touch on here are artifacts generated by the Sauce Labs app and how to use the Sauce Ignore file. Now that you've run your first Cypress test, you should notice that an artifacts directory appears in your project file. Each test run has a unique identifier, and inside you'll find the artifacts from that test. Here, you have a record of the config YAML used, the commands sent by different tests, as well as valuable video and images that tell you more about what happened when your test failed. If you check out the Sauce Ignore file that was generated by Sauce CTL init, you'll notice that it includes several of the types of directories and files with information that isn't necessary for running your tests on Sauce Labs. This way, you can run your tests on our virtual machines quickly and efficiently. Thank you.